Welcome back. I'm Gary Bailey, and this is the Holy Ghost Forum in Murraysville, Pennsylvania. We want to talk about the things of the Spirit, the walk of the Spirit, the move of the Spirit, being led by the Spirit. Uh, the Christian life is, uh, is a spiritual life. It comes from the inside out. Paul said this, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Man is a triune being. He is spirit, soul, and body. And uh, everyone is. Even before they're born again, they are spirit, soul, and body. The only thing is that uh, the, uh, the spirit of man before the new birth has no life. He's dead spiritually. He's apart from God. Spiritual death simply means separation from God. But we have spiritual life in Christ. We're new creatures created in righteousness. Thank God. And uh, the point being is our life emana emanates from the inside out. We are spiritual beings and uh, we, we live our lives from our spirit natures, from our spirit beings. Not from our head, not, not so much soulish. But, uh, but spiritual, Amen. and uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, you. You know, most people understand and recognize the new birth, where uh, uh, Jesus spoke and said to Nicodemus, uh, he said, "You must be born again." Nicodemus thought in terms of the natural, in terms of the flesh. Should I go back into my mother's womb? No, Nicodemus. He said, you've got to be born of the Spirit. And so we, we understand to be born again is to be spiritually born. Uh, to be uh, a new creature in Christ is to have your spirit reborn and joined with Jesus. Uh, but we have a, a, a second experience that the scripture talks about. And that is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And really, that's what these sessions are all about. It's this experience that uh, the church experienced on the day of Pentecost. And, uh, and we have the privilege of, of receiving and walking in and benefiting from. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Pastor Gary, uh, you were talking earlier about uh, receiving fresh infillings. Amen. Yeah, we uh, we get caught up in talking about the gifts and how they work and uh, trying to impart and teach and uh, familiarize people with the gifts. But sometimes we neglect the giver of the gifts. And uh, Jesus said uh, to those early disciples, go to uh, Jerusalem and wait and don't do anything until the Holy Ghost comes. And he was very emphatic about it and he knew from the time that he uh, said that uh, that it would only be 10 days until the Holy Ghost came and so they waited and prayed in the upper room and when the Holy Ghost came the gifts of the Spirit came uh, he is the giver of the gifts uh, and so it is this baptism in the Holy Ghost is kind of the initiation it's the where you have the breakthrough it's where you begin to receive uh, we also in the scripture also calls it being filled with the Holy Spirit. And if you follow just a little uh, simple study in the early book of Acts, you'll find that they were filled again and then they were filled again. And, uh, and so you can be filled with the Spirit, but that can kind of drain off. I don't know if any of you, uh, I know, Gary, when I'm preaching on Sunday, I'm filled with the Spirit. And depending on what I do Sunday afternoon, that just stays like that. that anointing just stays strong. Yeah. Unless I'm doing something materially. Mm -hmm. And then it begins to taper off. It begins to fade. But uh, so it is totally uh, scriptural and proper to ask God to fill you again. Fill you afresh with the Spirit. And I'm in here praying most mornings, and quite often I'll ask God to fill me uh, afresh 
with the Holy Spirit. Te lo bara shatara borite me la arikiola masando si le shando ripe kiola basacho. And that's what happens as soon as he, as soon as I pray that I begin speaking in tongues. And somebody <coughs> will say, "Well, you don't have to." Well, why would I not want to? Yeah. What, if you're going to ask God to fill you with His Spirit, why would you not want the gifts along with the giver? It's like you want the giver, but you don't want the gifts. It doesn't even make any sense. And so, of course I want to, and I act by faith as though I, I'm getting what I'm believing. I'm believing He's filling me with the Holy Spirit, and I act accordingly. And the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so if, if you're not going to act in faith, you're just going backwards. Uh, but praise the Lord. It's the baptism of the Holy Ghost is where it starts. He's the giver of the gifts, and he brings the gifts when you allow him to come in and fill you. And when, you can say it this way, when you totally yield to him. And if you're not speaking in tongues, you have not totally yielded. I'm sorry, but I'm taking from the Bible here. Uh, I'm not sorry. I'm telling the truth. (laughs) If you haven't been speaking in tongues, you're holding back. You haven't totally yielded. And conversely, then you're not filled. Uh, Can I I interject here, Gary? When when God's got your tongue, he's got your life. James. Yeah. You can bridle the horse's mouth. You can turn the whole horse about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, The tongue is a mighty member. And if God can't get that mighty member, what's he going to do? He may as well forget it. Yeah. So the power of life and death is in the tongue. Oh, yeah. It's very important to God has a hold of that yeah. tongue. Yeah. yeah. One of the very first things uh, when Paul Joseph was here, yes. when Kaufman grabbed me and took me aside, said, be careful what you say. <laughs> be very careful about what you say to whom or about whom or whatever. He said, it's God he said, there's life and death in your tongue. Yeah. I didn't know that. I hadn't, I hadn't been schooled that far ahead and stuff yet. But I took it to heart. Yeah. Amen. Hopefully I didn't screw and, it up too many times. But yeah. And yeah. it's it's all around you every day. Every day. Every day. Yeah. Go ahead if you uh, had anything else to share on that. Uh, I just want to say this. The, the Holy Ghost is Jesus manifest in you. Jesus Absolutely. is seated at the right hand of God. He's coming again soon, but he sent his spirit. He sent the Holy Spirit to be him here in the earth. And his Holy Spirit does that by being in you and you acting like him. Does that mean that you're as perfect as Jesus? Materially, no. Positionally, yes. We're washed in the blood. We're clean. We're white as snow. Practically speaking, we still make mistakes. Uh... But that anointing is promised and belongs to every believer, but every believer sadly does not want it. That's sad here. Well, uh, yeah, there's sometimes unpersuadableness, which you speak spoken of. Uh, but again, the reason for this forum is so we don't have to be ignorant of these right. things. Praise so we want to we want to talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit or with the Holy Spirit so that you can benefit from it. One one of the things that breeds ignorance is is uh, is our theology sometimes shuts the door to all these benefits that scripture affords us. And what I mean by that, if you have a theology that says that things that took place in the Bible were for that day and they no longer apply to this day, the door has been shut. There's no, I mean, you can read the Bible till you're blue in the face, but as long as you believe it was for yesterday, or for another time, or for another people, uh, you'll never reach out to receive what God has for you. Um, faith, as Pastor Gary so, so said so well, uh, is an action. And believing shows up in our hands and our feet and in our actions. And 
if we're going to believe that uh, that tongues is for today, that the gifts of the Spirit is for today, that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for today, we need to act like it's so and, and practice that uh, as if it were so. We read these scriptures, uh, for instance, in, uh, in Luke. It records uh, the experience of Jesus himself being filled with the Spirit. And what we, uh, we need to realize is that Jesus was anointed like some of the Old Testament prophets were anointed uh, in his day. He came and was baptized of John. And uh, when he was baptized, it says in verse 21, when, uh, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. And uh, this was Jesus' experience of being filled with the Spirit. And just uh, prior to that, John begins to prophesy not only about Jesus, but he prophesies about Jesus bringing the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, uh, to those coming after. Yes. He, he, he says this, let me read this from verse 16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, speaking of Jesus himself, the latchet of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose. Praise the Lord. He shall baptize you with the <clears throat> Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. And you think about it, uh, when John said that, Jesus was just beginning his earthly ministry. And at this point, uh, we look from this point, three and a half years later, the Holy Spirit was poured out when Jesus had ascended to heaven. The, uh, the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost. And what John said literally came to pass in three and a half years. Uh, and he goes on here, he says, whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner, uh, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And he continued to exhort the people. But uh, this phrase where he says, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And then uh, just a, a few verses later, he, uh, Jesus comes, is filled with the Spirit, and we know he's filled because he speaks of it uh, in chapter 4, that Jesus is full of the Spirit. And uh, he began his earthly ministry. So Jesus ministered with no limit of the Holy Spirit. I mean, he, he ministered with, with any and every anointing. He ministered with uh, unlimited resource. Uh, the Holy Spirit is poured upon the body of Christ in unlimited resource, but we're all have access to that, you know, so where Jesus could be used in, in any number of ways, because he was basically the only one filled with the spirit on the earth at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but today the body of Christ, the large body, we're filled yeah. every individual, whosoever will has come and been filled and has access to gifts and anointings and power. Amen. And uh, we see this in chapter four, where Jesus, uh, I, I love this because Luke starts out the chapter and he says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan. Uh, where did he get full of the Holy Ghost? When he was baptized of John in the Jordan River, the Holy Ghost descended and filled him Amen. with the Spirit. And that, that infilling is similar to an infilling any of us could receive today. Amen. Um, and people might say, oh, well, that was Jesus, or that was in Bible days, or that was not, or that's not needed today. Here, can I say something? Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> we talked at the last session about First Corinthians chapter 12, where the eye cannot say I have no need of the ear, the foot cannot say I have no need of the hand. And that the gifts and callings are very amongst the body of Christ. And yet, in almost every church for service, okay, 
one person exhibits maybe a gift and nobody else does. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 14 says in verse 26, How is it then, brethren, when you come together, everyone, everyone, if you got a hundred people, a hundred people have a psalm, a doctrine, Amen. a tongue, a revelation, have an interpretation. Let all things be done <clears throat> unto the edifying. And yet we have one person at the front yeah. edifying. And I'm challenging you pastors that may be watching this. And I'll just say for myself, when I was going to school out in Oklahoma, uh, right before the service started one day, we had 3,500 people packed into the uh, RCA, yeah, no, the old uh, Nanowski right, Center. Yeah, the Nanowski Recreation Nanowski Center. Center. Right. Yeah. And uh, the Lord broke in right before the service started and talked to me. And he said, someday you'll stand before me as a pastor and give account for all the people you pastored and what are their gifts and callings, and how did you help them discover it and step into it? He, God told me I would answer for that. Wow. And, uh, and and then he said, and did you help them, or did you hinder them and hold them back? God said that. And so, I'm always on the people. <laughs> yeah. To give a tongue. Yeah. To give a prophecy. What What's in your heart? Speak it out. You know, uh, Brother Dave, God bless him. He's been here a long time. Uh, but last session, he has a vision. He wasn't sure to give it or not. Mm -hmm. So between sessions back here, he's telling me I had this vision, but I didn't know what to do with it. But it was exactly what we had been talking about. Yeah. And uh, uh, this, I'm convinced this happens to more people in the service than we realize. And I, I tell people this. The Holy Ghost wants to interrupt this service. And that's what tongues is all about. You just know that the Lord wants to do something. You don't know what it is. But you just, you know, God wants to do something. Give a tongue. Yeah. As soon as you give a tongue, it places a demand. Yeah. You've just placed a demand on the interpretation. And you acted in faith. Without acting in faith, it's impossible to please God. So right there, you give a tongue, God's pleased with that faith. Not only that, it, it pulls on the faith of the interpreter now. Yep. He's got to move in faith. And when that tongue is spoken, everything is quiet. Because it brings up the faith of everybody in the building now is expecting. You, you know what I just thought of here, <clears throat> Pastor between sessions, we were talking a little bit about uh, receiving a fresh infilling. And both uh, Pastor Rob and Pastor Gary said that uh, uh, not too long ago, uh, they had asked, God, give me a fresh infilling. Yeah. And the experience was immediate. <laughs> immediate, yeah. yeah. But like they, the they began to speak with other tongues. Amen. And they experienced this fresh infilling of the spirit but think of it in these terms gary when we uh uh when we ask for an infilling personally the first manifestation is tongues i mean you and, and honestly you can see this through the scripture anytime they were filled with the spirit anytime there was a move of the spirit tongues was part and parcel of the experience that's right it's part of the experience so think about this when we stand up to edify the church what are we doing we're not only when we speak out in a, a, a message in tongues or an utterance in tongues we're not only filling you know being filled personally but we're making yes. a, an opportunity for yes. the entire church the holy ghost gets to come into the whole thing yeah yes. the whole church is coming in yeah and that's what made me think when you guys personally are filled that's wonderful on an individual basis but when you stand up in a church service, you literally give the whole congregation access to a fresh experience of being filled with the Spirit. Absolutely. What do you think, Gary? It makes sense to me. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. Go ahead. Something else that needs to be considered here, too. 
when you get up and give your tongue or you're the interpreter or you have a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom for somebody, you've just defeated the devil. You have taken him out of the equation. You've put him in his place. The congregation rises and their faith to do the same thing happens. Yeah. Amen. If nobody says anything, everybody wonders. Well, you know, that's sad. That's just sad. You know, yeah. I guess it's going to be a rough week. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. got no hope. Yeah, and, and this is part of the thing. Those gifts, you know, one of the names of God is I Am. And if you look back in the Old Testament where the, the children spread the blood over the doorsteps, or the, the lentils, uh, uh, figurative Hebrew translation is, is when the death angel was passing over, it says, I Am He who stood in the do- stands in the doorway. God Himself stands in the doorway. When you get him filled with the Holy Ghost, because it was covered with blood too, Christ shed it. Yeah, we got it. So when the devil comes to your door- doorstep, it's I am He, Christ, who stands in the door for you. You don't face the devil on your own. That is why it is good to become proficient in tongues, because if nothing else, you you put the enemy on his heels. Amen. Yeah. He doesn't know what you're talking about. He'd like to know. And when he comes, you're ready. You know, you're ready for battle. Amen. If not, you know, if you just sit through uh, lectures on Sunday morning and that's it for the week, uh, you're not ready for anything. You're going to have your brains handed to you. You need yeah. to share the vision you had. Go uh, ahead, uh, Dave. Yeah. God graces me with his vision because it gives me a lot of detail. It's a long white limestone hall with white limestone mortar in it. Very ornate tables, long tables. They have, you know, flowers and garlands and all that kind of stuff all over. And there's chairs and there's people. There's three sets of tables, people sitting on both sides of the table. Long tables. Mm. And it's like a celebration going on. They're, they're not dressed as they should be to be in a place like that. You know what I mean? They're underdressed. I mean, they're wearing suits and everything, but everything else in this place is magnificent. Yeah. God has. Are you done? Go ahead. Well, none of the people have faces. That's mm. right. There's no faces on the people. And it's like I'm walking in front of the guy who's talking behind me. I can't see who it is. But I'm looking, and every once in a while I see an eyebrow, I'll see a nose. But nobody is Start complete. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Here's, here's the dream God has a table set for you that is beyond what you've imagined, beyond what you've expected. He has a gifting and a calling and a purpose for you that is greater than you think. And you're a faithful churchgoer. You love the Lord and you pursue the things of the Lord, but you've shunned the gifts of the Spirit. You have not want to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit if it means you have to speak in tongues. And you're showing up at the table but you're underdressed and underprepared and you're not ready for what God has for you. Mm. And you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues to take your right place at the God that God has prepared for you to take. That's yeah. it. Amen. Glory to God. And the fact that these people don't have faces is uh, this is ongoing even now. Even now this is happening. I'm not talking about in the past. This is right now this is happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's just coming into view. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Rob, yeah. Yeah, The the gifts of the Spirit and what you just heard right now is the gifts in function. It says there's (laughs) operations, certain ways they function in different people. Well, they function in my brother Dave differently than they function in Pastor. Absolutely. absolutely. They function differently in me than they function in Gary. But when we all come together, that's it. functioning in the that's Holy it. Ghost, we have this puzzle that comes together fitted, and God is right there placing the pieces together. And when we're done, we have a complete picture of that day, what he wants to say. Mm-hmm. Many, it's, it's a many. choir, a heavenly choir. Just heavenly choir. When yeah. everybody's... Praise you want that? Perfect heart. in harmony. Yeah. Yes. Many Quiet. days, Amen. many Sundays we come in here and I'd be sitting over here 
and in me, for whatever reason, I, it's like God shows me direction. I know which way the service is going. He gives me a word, and pastor will start preaching on that word. And I'll just know that God wants to do something, but I don't know what. I don't have a tongue. I don't have a prophecy. So there's times I'll just stand up and give the tongue, and all of a sudden, other things start to break. I yeah. placed a piece in that puzzle, that picture, and God started touching other people and moving. Amen. Amen. And the gifts, the Holy Ghost desires so much to move in the service that He's just willing to go at any moment that you're willing to let Him be. Yeah, You know, Matthew 18 says, with two or more touch and agree on a thing, so shall it be. So when you have two people or three people or four people working in harmony that God has them, a lot of problems get solved. A lot of things get put to bed that never happen again. But if you walk away with that piece in your pocket, you know, it leaves room for, you know, that somebody doesn't get what they need that day. Yes, sir. Many, many of you are afraid to turn your people loose. You're afraid of what they might do. You're afraid of what trouble may cause. I want to remind you, as you're watching this video, that you do not have one single thing that God didn't give you. None of it belongs to you anyway. That's right. And I want to say this. God has equipped you to handle anything that comes up in your church. Anything. If you will believe and trust Him, by letting uh, the people free to move in the Holy <clears throat> Ghost, you'll be amazed at what happens, <laughs> first yeah. of all, and then how God opens to you what it was and explains okay. what, and you got, and you can put the whole thing together. It's amazing. It's, it's miraculous how yeah. these things happen. I, I want to say that, uh, you know, a lot of our approach to church and you know, quote unquote religion, religious activity. Uh, it's like we're doing it on our own, and we're we're almost like we act almost like we're orphans. And God is way out there. Uh, you know, there's a name for it: uh, deism, uh, or, or uh, a person that's a deist believes in God, but he's he, he uh, he's a f unapproachable. He's unapproachable. Yeah, you can't touch him. But really what we're talking about is having a relationship with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Having a relationship with God the Father and with His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the body of Christ, we have the privilege of being in the body of Christ with literally millions of members. And what a privilege and honor it is to, to, uh, to go almost anywhere and meet people in the body of Christ. I, I mean, I travel in the ministry and it's just always a joy to me to meet new brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. Amen. But what we have to remember and, and understand, this is not our organization. That's right. <laughs> this is God's organization. The church is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, John tells it, he really says it the clearest, and that is, uh, uh, we have seen and heard that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us. So thank God we have fellowship with each other. Uh, but he goes on, he says, and truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. He's talking about a personal an intimate relationship with the Godhead. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit indwells us, and God the Father and His Son Jesus Christ, we have fellowship one with another. Mm -hmm. uh, I had just recently watched uh, the movie in uh, uh, The Shack. I don't know if anybody's seen, uh, seen the movie, uh, but uh, it, depicted, it depicted God the Father, they called Him Papa, but actually depicted him as a woman. Now, don't everybody go up in arms and <laughs> and say, God, you know... You, they called the woman Papa? Yeah, they called her, called her Papa. But uh, uh, actually, you know, biblically, you know, God has 
the traits of male and female in uh, you know if you look at the Hebrew language. That, that aside, it's not a it's not a movie about theology. Opening a can of worms. Here, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what was interesting about the movie was they depicted uh, they depicted God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and how this gentleman interacted with the three, and it just made me think that. You know, we're not fellowshipping necessarily with thousands of beings out there. We're fellowshipping with God the Father and God the Son. And the Holy Spirit certainly indwells us. And uh, when we talk about the gifts of the Spirit, the anointing of God and the presence of God, we're not talking about thousands of individuals. We're talking about a God that wants to know us, that wants to fellowship with us, that wants intimate friendship with us. Uh, I love what Jesus said. He said, uh, you're no longer servants. Now I call you friends. Praise the Lord. Abraham was a friend of God. Amen. Uh, Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the afternoon in the Garden of Eden. Uh, God really wants to have fellowship with us, and and uh, that you know, for anybody that's seen the movie, that you know, regardless of your theological objections, uh, all that aside. Uh, it just really brought home the idea that uh, we have a relationship with God the Father and God the Son. And uh, exactly what John said here, our fellowship. Think about that word fellowship. We're having fellowship here amongst ourselves. That's what God wants us to have. You know, sit down and have some fellowship with God the Father, with God the Son. And what's great about God and the Holy Ghost and Jesus. When Pastor and I were talking about asking God to be filled again, God desires this fellowship. Yes, He does. And yeah. when you ask, when I asked Him, when Pastor asked Him, immediately He responded. Yeah. And He's willing to respond to everybody that comes to Him and asks. It's, it's very simple. God says, "Come." And yeah, we got good fight. God's not yeah. going to turn anybody away that desires him. God is dead. 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 He is dead. dead. Not dead. <laughs> dead. That's what I said, dead, didn't I? Yeah. Dead. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Sounded yeah. Like it. <laughs> it took me a while to learn this, probably maybe two years, but because uh, I'm slow sometimes, you know. I don't understand what he's trying to tell me, and it takes a while. If he doesn't boil it down, it goes right by. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I think I told pastors, God gets me up at one thirty in the morning, you know, and he talks to me and tells me things, and he would yeah. do this day after day after day, and I was getting kind of annoyed with it. He said, well, if you talk to me during the day, I won't have to talk to you at night. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There so you he, go. He, not only, you know, we want to have the fellowship with him, but once you come to a certain point in God, he insists on the fellowship. Yeah. He said, I want, I want your time, you know. Sure. You take your time out to give to me. And years ago, the pastor used to say, I want you to try to give 10 minutes just praying to God. Praying in the language that you understand or praying in tongues. And it was like, oh, man, 10 minutes? And uh, now it goes on for hours. Yeah. It, it, it is, it is a, progressive, a progressive thing. Those are people who are in the Lord any depth for any length of time can't picture any other way life goes. Because I don't have a problem I can't take to God. I yeah. don't care what it is. Like I said, God miraculously healed me I can, you know, many, many times. But we, we need to get out of our thinking that God is a way off there someplace yeah. and we're here. Uh, no, He's... he's. Right. How does the Bible describe it? He, he's uh, In Him we live and move and have our being. I mean, He's... He's a friend that's closer than a brother. Um, he, he's a very present help in time of trouble. Uh, lo, I'm with you always, even into the end of the earth. Uh, we're yoked together. We're, I, I mean, uh, we need to... I, I love uh, the little book, uh, and maybe some of you have read this, is uh, uh, the little book by Brother Andrew, Practicing the Presence of God. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And uh, a kitchen worker who uh, basically was a little bit too clumsy for anything else, but spent his time working in the kitchen, talking to God, talking to God. And uh, that's what we're, we're talking about. You know, we're bringing his power. You know, 
why do we why do we struggle and stress over a miracle? The miracle worker is right here. You know, when we have fellowship together, a book is written about those. Uh, there's a record made of those that fellowship often one another talking about the things of God. And, uh, you know, we could very well put another seat out here, you know, for God himself because he's sitting here uh, fellowshipping with us. He's in our midst talking with us, talking to us, talking through us. Um, You know, in Jesus' transfiguration, I I love this uh, in the book of the Gospel of Mark, I'm referring to that uh, uh, that uh, episode there, but uh, it was Moses and Elijah that appeared with Jesus, and it said they appeared to him talking with Jesus, not talking to Jesus, mm-hmm. talking with, with Jesus. There was a back and forth, and uh, what a we've spent a lot of time that week. Yeah, my, my, yeah. my neighbors think I'm nuts because I sit out in the backyard. I'm talking. The lady yeah. comes, looked at me like, you know, and her dog comes over and looks at me like, are you talking to me? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I talk to them and, and I hear from them. You know, God yeah. knows when I'm wound up about something. I can I can feel his arm or, around my shoulder. Yeah. Sometimes I can feel him like rubbing the back of my neck because, you know, there are times I get intense about some things. And yeah, it, yeah. It, it, and, you know, I've had to stop watching the news because I cannot stand yeah. the inhumanity the man does to each other. I, I, I just cannot believe it. It's grievous. Yeah. Yeah, you know. No. You know, I was thinking about something else that uh, Hubert Lindsay said that, uh, uh, that he, he made a point of saying is that God uses people to share the gospel. And you think about it, he's not waiting for angels to do it. Now, there may be thousands of millions of angels that are available. You know, our fellowship isn't with angels. Amen. You, know, you know, and it shouldn't be. I mean, I know some people through history have fellowshiped with angels at their own demise. <laughs> and, didn't go well. and yeah. Uh, yeah, they came up with their own doctrines well, and been religions. Some, and yeah. been some sad stuff. Yeah, some sad stuff, but uh, our fellowship isn't with them. Our fellowship is with God the Father and with His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And our work alongside the Father and the Son is to preach and share the gospel. Not the work of angels. Mm -hmm. It's our job. It's our responsibility uh, to share the gospel with, with other people. And if we're walking with the Father and with the Son, that's a natural part of what we do. That's, uh, uh, that's just part of it. And, the gifts of the Spirit in operation, that's just an outflow of God with us, God in us, God through us. Can I say something? Yeah. Uh, this needs to be said. In the, that movie, put that message across, you said, of this closeness of fellowship mm-hmm. and access. The scripture, fathers, provoke not your children under wrath but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. That's the exact function of a Christian dad, is to demonstrate the availability, the closeness, the uh, intimacy, and the communion of fellowship, so that when that child is growing up, he's getting that image of what God is like. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 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 What we demonstrate and what we show to our children and the people around us has a huge impact. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Pishata ha 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 ha. Borro bosho. Rama shakopra basheke. Dele kilido. Brono bedida dele. So pick up your sword of the Spirit and walk with me in this understanding of revelations and insights. Because as it says in the Word, that I went about with signs and wonders following my word. You do the word. Come to me and take this word and do what you know how to do in the word and I will follow you with signs and wonders. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, God is alive today. He's real today. Our fellowship is with him today. And the work that he did yesterday, he'll do today. Uh, the the power he displayed and demonstrated yesterday, 
he'll to do today. Jesus Christ, of whom I have fellowship with, is the same yes. yesterday, today, and forever. Thank Lord. God for it. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. At least. Amen. Praise God. We got uh, ten minutes or so, but we don't have to go on. Is there anything else that uh, you all have you want to share? Praise God. Uh, I just want to encourage you, press in and have a relationship with, with Jesus. Amen. Get born again. Get filled with the Spirit. Stay filled with the Spirit. Have fresh infillings of the Spirit. Stay in His Word and, uh, and let your faith stand in the living God. Not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Uh, the God who's alive today and is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise God. God bless you. Thanks for watching.